A very good morning. Welcome you all in this webinar on Vaccine Pharmacovigilance, Faculty of Pharmacy, Parul Institute of Pharmacy and Research, Parul University. I, Vaishali Patel, Assistant Professor, Department of Quality Assurance, Faculty of Pharmacy, Parul Institute of Pharmacy and Research, Parul University. I delightfully introduce to our speaker, Mr. Vijay Singh, working as a manager, safety evaluation and risk management at Glenmar Pharmaceuticals, Mumbai, India. Sir has completed a uh, Master of Pharmacy in Pharmacological Department at 2012 NIT Greater Noida. Sir has completed Bachelor of Pharmacy in 2009 ITM Gida Gorakhpur, UP. Sir has more than 11 years of experience in pharmacovigilance, safety writing, signal management and clinical trials. Sir has various responsibility like handling global team of safety evaluations and risk management, handle signal management and risk management of process for pharmaceutical clients, parts of business development strategies for new and existing clients, helping in preparation of RFP and BID defense data, operations management and resource management, process initiative strategies and automation of new process, SOP authorizing, developing metrics and dashboards, Sir has previous designations in trainee clinical research at Miss Hospital Gurgaon, Haryana from May 2009 to 2010. Sir has also worked in these uh, quality analyst uh, SME subject matter expertise in a pharmacovigilance process at Vipro Limited, Sarita, Vihar, New Delhi from Feb 2012 to April 2013. Sir has also worked in the pharmacovigilance process as Cognate Technology Solutions, Mumbai, India, April 2013 to 2015. Sir has also worked as a team lead in pharmacovigilance process at APCR Life Science, New Delhi, India, from June 2015 to 2016. Now, with these introductions, I request to Sir to start this webinar. Sir, over to you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Vaishali, ma'am, for the nice introduction. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Vijay Singh. As uh, ma'am has already told you about my journey, currently I'm working in Glenmark Pharmaceutical as a manager in pharmacovigilance. So I mostly look about a global team here in Glenmark, which normally work in alignment for the development of the aggregate report in uh, pharmacovigilance. So today uh, I, I will be discussing on vaccine pharmacovigilance and let's make this interaction uh, session more interactive. Uh, let's discuss this. You can ask me any queries uh, 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 and the career uh, about pharmacovigilance since I'm in the industry for almost more than 10 years. So uh, you can ask me if you want to pursue a career in this field. Uh, I, I have made a small presentation for you but uh, apart from presentation also if you have any doubt we can discuss those as as well uh, i hope my screen is visible to all of you yes sir yes sir it's visible yeah. thank thank you ma'am for the confirmation so uh, today we will discuss about vaccine pharmacovigilance okay now uh, as you know uh, if can anyone um, volunteer and tell me what is their understanding about pharmacovigilance means ha have we been they it used in their daily routine or whatever they know uh, from the social media or anything they want to as a part of their curriculum or whatever knowledge they have about pharmacovigilance would anyone like to volunteer Okay, so uh, so going ahead, pharmacovigilance. Now, pharmacovigilance is all about safety of the medicines that we market. In we all are in pharmacy, and the overall goal of pharmacy is to produce medicines that are useful for the treatment of to the patient for various disease based on the therapeutic area, but whenever the intention to produce a medicine is to make sure that it is for the betterment of the public okay 
but in the real world scenario when a medicine is given to any person it comes with a parody or it comes with a baggage of some of the side effects but in pharmacovigilance what we do we try always to make sure the benefit of that particular product is higher than the risk so the risk should be minimal or it it should be less we we cannot uh, outline the risk it will always be risk would be there but we should ensure that the risk should be minimum and overall the benefit should be higher okay so in this pharmacovigilance what we do so we have this department in all the pharmaceutical companies there are multiple cro's there are it companies working toward making a uh, practice of safer medicine across globe so here in pharmacovigilance what we do it's a kind of we try to detect the problem means the we try to detect the adverse event we try to assess those adverse event in relationship with the drug that how much that adverse event is causally related means how much potential does the adverse event have to make it a risk or how much uh, we try to assess how much beneficial the drug is to the patient or if the drug is having some risk in the assessment we try to find out what is the extent of that risk okay now post detection assessment we try to understand that and then we try to prevent that so in this department uh, within the pharma companies this is a dedicated department where we try to study about the different side effects of the drug and we try to adhere as i initially told that the benefits of the drug should always be more than the risk so we try to make sure that the benefits are uh, higher uh in terms of risk and for any product if the risk is becoming higher we try to inform those uh, thing to the regulatory bodies okay similarly this is the simple definition of pharmacovigilance now in terms of vaccine this is an area in pharmacovigilance that is vaccine pharmacovigilance so within pharmacovigilance we have a veterinary pharmacovigilance we have medicine human pharmacovigilance human pharmacovigilance can be further divided into uh, your pharmacovigilance that is related to your medicines then pharmacovigilance that is directly uh, related to your vaccines pharmacovigilance that is related to your medical devices so these are the further things that are further recategorized in the pharmacovigilance now we will today we will try to see what is vaccine pharmacovigilance and uh, we'll try to build uh, awareness about it because we all have recently uh, taken vaccines uh, for covid-19 so that part of process within the pharmacovigilance will undercome in vaccine pharmacovigilance okay uh, if in middle if you have any question please free to stop me if you have any question do do ask me okay free, please feel free to stop me wherever you have any doubt now i gave you an basic idea what the pharmacovigilance is there now the same thing applies to vaccine pharmacovigilance with little bit of twist so in vaccine pharmacovigilance also it is the science where, where we try to detect assess understanding and prevention but here an additional aspect of communication of adverse events is an additional step that comes into picture okay now why this comes into an picture normally whenever we try to identify any side effects in, in uh, or any risk we are able to identify for example now recently there are multiple vaccines in the market so if you have taken any vaccine for covid-19 if you have taken covid shield or co vaccine post uh, taking that uh, vaccine you th there are certain labeling or certain guidance given by these companies that within few days you will be having fever for one or two days you will be having some redness you will be ha having some itching across the area where the injection is given so th these are the pre studied uh, side effect that are already company tells to if someone has a cardiac arrest or someone is experiencing something which is not 
told by the company, then the scenario changes. There is something we, you need, we need to communicate this to the companies so that they can further use that knowledge for greater benefit of the public. So we in a pharma, pharmacy field, we have this responsibility uh, to communicate as much as information we uh, have relating to any risk, whether it's a vaccine, whether the day to day medicine that our family members or our friends or our colleagues that are consuming if they are having any side effects. So it is our responsibility, a noble responsibility, then only the information can be used for a greater benefit. So here in vaccine pharmacovigilance, since all these, uh, whether the drugs are their vaccine, medical devices or the normal uh, medicines, whenever they are coming to market, they have a preclinic, uh, they have a preclinical trial uh, uh, they go under clinical trial that is uh, uh, animal trial and the human trial and then the post marketing part comes so here uh, in the pharmacovigilance we normally monitor the safety in the post marketing phase only Th that's why uh, pharmacovigilance is also referred as post marketing surveillance because all this surveillance are done mostly outside when they come into the market Okay. It is done in the clinical trial as well, but in clinical trial, we don't get that much of data because in clinical trial, uh, the, there are outliers, the selection process, the randomization of the patient, the selection of the process that is done in very strict environment. So the number of reports, actually the number of side effects changes when it comes into the actual population because actual population we don't have a control who is taking the medicine but in clinical trial we have a control on the population okay so as i told you a basics about pharmacovigilance in vaccine pharmacovigilance it is also the same as the pharmacovigilance here the communication of adverse event is is a process that is uh, mentioned by the who that apart from detection assessment understanding and prevention we should communicate the adverse event that are following immunization okay so we will discuss this more okay now uh, I, i'll just take a pause anyone has any query till now okay uh so every every thing that we do whether we are producing whether we are manufacturing uh, medicines whether we are doing an r d for a medicine everything comes with the aim or a goal okay so uh, there is a goal for pharmacovigilance there is a goal for development of drug there is a goal for discovery of a drug so there is a goal attached to everything that a companies do or we do okay so uh, for the goal of pharmacovigilance vaccine pharmacovigilance is what is the goal if someone asks you what is the goal now everyone we know that farm in pharmacovigilance we focus on the safety part of the drug we try to make the medicine safer we try to minimize the risk on the particular medicine so similarly for the vaccine pharmacovigilance the goal is related to vaccine that whenever a vaccine is given to person he should not have some serious side effect okay there can be minor side effects which are studied during the clinical trial but it should not be the side effect should not be a, a serious or critical that has that it create a negative impact on public health okay so the overall goal of vaccine pharmacovigilance or medicine pharmacovigilance is almost the same that it should it should focus on minimizing the negative effects uh, to the health of the individual and lessen the potential negative impact or the impact on the public health should be less okay but there are the other ways for example whenever you are taking a medicine okay if for example in day to day uh, if you have fever people take antibiotics or people take uh, take paracetamol so there is a set of condition already st uh, studied and established okay that with the paracetamol there is chances of dizziness there is a chances of nauseating feeling so these are the things so apart from this if something serious occur then we should have a focus what is already told by the company that for example after having a paracetamol you will feel a body ache okay so then you can understand that after having some doses of paracetamol you can have that but 
it should not be that after taking paracetamol there is a serious condition or a cardiac arrest or a infection in your blood anything should not be there so that is the goal of the overall uh, pharmacovigilance and with respect to vaccine it is related to the vaccine pharmacovigilance as well now we we have tried to understand what is pharmacovigilance we have tried to understand what is vaccine pharmacovigilance and now we'll try to understand what is the importance of vaccine safety can anyone tell me why it is necessary to have safety of vaccine in place can can just I mean, just uh, any random thoughts whatever you have with the recent scenarios of covid uh, i think most of the people would be would be able to relate this why we want that vaccines that are given to people should be safe any any uh, thoughts on that any random thought will also work uh, let, let's try to make this interactive session then you'll be able to understand more of what i want to tell you okay now uh, i'll just give a scenario uh, we we have a very good scenario of recently covid now once this pandemic came uh, globally when it hit uh, the global footprints what happened and when the company started working on developing the vaccines uh, uh, they, there were emergency uh, dispatch of vaccines a company were given waiver okay if you have found something uh, if you have found any vaccine then there were emergency use post use were given by the uh, regulatory bodies now in the starting phase of pandemic when these uh, vaccines came uh, came started developing in india or anywhere for example covid 19 uh, for example covid shield was one of the first vaccines in india then it was covaxin now almost 13 14 companies have already ro rolled out uh, vaccines for covid 19 but when you remember the initial phase there was a hesitance in the public to take vaccine okay uh Do do you know why there was a hesitance to take uh, in the public to take vaccines? Anyone would like to tell, or from your experience, if you were also hesitant to take vaccine, why was that thought uh, in in our minds initially? But now, if you ask, everyone is ready to take. If there is a booster dose for any drug would come, everybody would volunteer, and now people will go and take those. uh vaccine but initially there was a hitch in the public there was a doubt there there were some uh, uh what to say there there were some there there was some doubt in the public to whether they should take vaccine or not I, I, am i right on this uh with our experiences that we have felt am i audible uh, vrishali ma'am am i am i audible can, can anyone confirm am, am i audible at least you can confirm that right Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Okay. So, ca can we have some answer? Uh, uh, thought whether when the vaccine came, we there was a little bit hesitance. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes. Sometimes it might be painful or swelling. Uh, it may be. So. Okay. Any any other? Okay. So th thank you for telling. So sometimes there was a doubt whether the vac uh, the injection would be painful yes, or yes. there can be some injection related issues such as there can be swelling, there can be redness, there can be itching. Any other aspect? Any other any other thought?
okay this was one of the criteria definitely but one of the major thing that public did not have confidence in vaccine initially okay if if someone tells uh, you or someone tells you that polio vaccine is needed okay but when the first time polio vaccine came if someone has told people to take polio vaccine many uh, there were it, it took decades it took 40 50 years to educate people that it is necessary to take polio vaccine to eradicate polio okay similarly the confidence took so much time to build in people so similarly when covid 19 vaccines came initially they were not confidence in people 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 have seen the bad side of covid 19 so that they were not ready confident to take that vaccine uh, initially uh, because they thought that it might further have some repercussion or further can have some risk on their health okay so that's why there are regulatory bodies along globally that that they have their uh, work to make sure that whenever the vaccine is marketed it should be a safe okay uh, because vaccination is a process or immunization is a process which is given to a very large set of public now if covid 19 vaccines are given in india we have already reached one uh, 100 crore people have already been given okay so if it has a bad impact so it will affect a very large population okay so regulatory bodies they have a very strict regular regulation in place so that they can uh, win the trust of the people okay so that's why it's very important uh, there is a very uh, important point of vaccine safety now all this is related with all what i have already discussed but i have put it in terms of points for you to better understand that importance of vaccine safety is is to decrease in the disease risk increase attention on the vaccine risk public confidence in vaccine safety trials low tolerance for vaccine risk okay uh, we cannot uh, or regulatory bodies or any company cannot have tolerance they should not say that okay we can give this vaccine for covid 19 but everyone will have a infection in their blood we cannot take that right if someone tells you that you 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 are going to have cardiac arrest while taking this vaccine you will not take that vaccine okay so there is almost very low tolerance for vaccine risk for drug risk still we have a tolerance because there are some drugs for example for example if there is any drug that is used to treat cancer anti-cancer drug anti-cancer drug have a lot of side effects okay uh, one of the side commonly side effects that you know that people normally there is a hair fall okay so that's a kind of side effect with anti-cancer. There, there, there are many other side effects for cancer, uh, anti-cancer medicines. But still, why those drugs are in the market? Because to save cancer, we can or the public can compromise on certain risk. Okay. So that's why the tolerability for normal medicines is high. But for vaccines, there is very low tolerance for vaccine risk. So even the uh, regulatory bodies they they make sure that they direct the companies that they have a higher standard of safety is expected for vaccines okay and vaccine should render generally is given to healthy people so it should not cause as ill as drug is given okay then the lower risk tolerance is what is something we uh, focus for vaccine pharmacovigilance now uh, I'll, I'll just take a pause is there any question for me okay now uh, we will try to discuss the steps in vaccine pharmacovigilance now we have understood okay what is the vaccine pharmacovigilance why it is important what is the goal of vaccine pharmacovigilance but how it is done okay the question always remains how it is done and to to this platform i i would like all all of us who who are in this noble uh, profession of pharmacy try to encourage people try to encourage uh, colleagues or uh, within your family it's not only related to vaccine any kind of pharmacovigilance 
if you f- have any side effects or if your any uh, family members or any your friends friend circle or your colleagues anyone is having side effect after having consuming a drug try to report those information to the companies okay in india we have a very low reportability rate so that uh, it is becoming difficult and it is becoming easier for companies but it is becoming difficult for uh, regulatory bodies to keep a very strict stringent over here though there are guidelines but if the number of reporting increases the genuine reporting increase it will help as a community to uh, think uh, for a better uh, cause of the public health okay so i through this medium i just want to encourage all of you whenever you are having any side effect with you uh, directly indirectly in any form you come to know about any information please report this information you uh, you can directly report to government side there is a uh, information available in cdsco then uh, uh, for after if you are taking any medicine there is a customer care number given at the back of the leaflet they have their uh, number for their uh, pharmacovigilance department to report such information so that it overall it turns to be betterment of the public now moving on to the topic of what are the steps in vaccine pharmacovigilance so today we'll try to understand what is the vaccine now i'll take an example and then through that example i will try to make you understand so reporting of aefi so aefi is adverse event from immunization so assume someone has taken a covid shield or any covid 19 vaccine okay then after taking that uh, vaccine he has reported that there is a there is a blurred vision okay or after taking any vaccine a person is suffering from vision or their blurred vision he is developing a vision blurred okay so he is reporting that information to the company now so what company do so first they receive this information and after receiving this information they try to understand the scenario okay what happened with that person who took immunization what were his health conditions was there any other medicines that he was taking all those hypothesis is uh, studied and developed okay so after studying in detail about all these hypotheses the company try to establish a association whether the person the, who has reported this information is actually valid or not valid or not means whether there are any other cofactors or comorbidities with which there was a relation or it is the vaccine with which this the relation so that relationship is developed and understood once that is done uh, then there are within the companies there are uh, uh, there are doctors there are uh, who evaluate this report okay the for example i told that with uh, taking a vaccine there is a blurry vision one person has reported that he started uh, seeing having a blurred vision so Uh, that hypothesis first is discussed within the company what are the scenarios for blurry vision why that person is having we try to take information from that person or any relative who is reporting this information and then this is validated within the company whether what to what extent that information is correct okay if the information is correct for example then we always try to see now blurry vision is something very serious condition if everyone is taking vaccine and everyone is having blurry vision then we cannot market that vaccine okay because that's a serious condition it can further uh, lead to loss in vision which is a very critical condition okay but then the company at that point evaluate the need for that and once the evaluate the need for that then they kind of recommend certain actions to minimize that risk okay if the risk is very serious then there is a probability of stopping that drug but if for example after immunization if there is a fever two day two day fever or three day fever or some body ache then uh, you you can include that into the company label and you can guide people and educate people that okay after having this vaccine you will be having certain amount of fever for certain days or you will be having some body ache you will be having some rashes 
so it will be educated to people so that people become aware and they know that after taking vaccine these will be there but if any serious condition is there then the company is liable to study that for example in covid a covid shield vaccine initially there were many scenarios uh, of people reporting cardiac arrest on covid shield then people uh, the company started to study those cases uh, that why there are cardiac arrest and then the company has given publication as well that the number of cardiac arrest that were there in the medication where the people they were already having some cardiac issues or their age were more than 65 years or means they were having some comorbidity comorbidities so then the company has to be liable for their actions and company has to give this information to the public so that uh, uh, they can inform that it is for greater good of the public okay so these are the general steps in the pharmacovigilance similar kind of steps are also for for um, in the normal pharmacovigilance drug pharmacovigilance as well so these uh, i i had just prepared a simple slides only uh, for the basic understanding so these were the slides i will just uh, stop presenting and uh, if there are any questions anything anyone want to ask okay if there are no questions vaishali ma'am yes sir no? yes sir yes anybody if, have any questions regarding to this webinar yes sir you can continue sir okay that, that was the last uh, presentation ma'am yeah that was the last ppt so i i have nothing more to tell if someone has any question maybe they can discuss with me uh, if there are no questions then th thank you for your time really appreciate it uh, you can reach me on linkedin if you have any queries uh, you can find me there if you have any queries if you know, want to know more uh, yes sir thank you sir for sharing your valuable informations and knowledge time with us sir you cover all the basics informations regarding to what is pharmacovigilance Uh, regarding to this uh, role of pharmacovigilance what are steps involved in the pharmacovigilance so thank you so much sir uh, sir you. i would like to share e certificate as a token of gratitude on behalf of faculty of pharmacy parul institute of pharmacy and research parul university Th thank you ma'am sure yes sir just wait i share the certificate Yes, sir. Kindly accept this. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your time. All the best. Yes. Thank you. Thank guys. you. Thank you, sir. So we are here end of the meeting. Thank you, all of you. Thank you.